The following presentation is brought to you by the Realm Network. This is Vince Russo's The Brand. Hey, oh, hello everybody. This is Vince Russo here for Line Tigers, Bears, and Dummy. I mean Disco. I'm here with uh, Jeff Lane and uh, I was going to say the great Disco Inferno, but we're going to open up this show with getting the elephant out of the room. But before I do, I'm here with Disco Inferno. What's going on, fellas? I'm good. I went to the doctor today. Got a good clean bill of health, so... Would you get a physical? Yeah, physical. And everything's good? Everything's good. Do you look in your ears and see nothing? Uh, so you know you, you you don't even care if I get a good clean bill of health. That's that's fine. No, let me tell you let's what. So no, wait, let's wait till you get your figure. You start coming on here and talk about all the problems you have. And I'm let me you know. tell you what I care about because it's not on the format. Because okay, I, oh, great. I had the revelation last night, and everybody knows this show is about honesty. And integrity and truth, mm -hmm. which is what I stand on. Now, you called me yesterday. Let, let, let's verify everything because you, you like to twist the truth sometime. You called me yesterday and you asked me to do a, a favor for the Conan show, right? Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, let, let me back it up because Jeff Lane pointed out something to me that I'd like to bring up here. Ever since you started doing that Conan show, which for some reason, and I'm going to have this conversation with Conan, for some reason, like, you think you're your co-host of that show, like, you think you're equal billing with Conan, that, and, and I'm going to be on the show next week, and I'm going to tell him that you come on here every week and you talk about co-hosting, which makes you his equal. But Jeff Lane pointed out to me the other day, he said, Vince, do you did you notice that ever since Glenn started on Conan's show, all the freaking Twitter promotion is for Conan's show, and he never says anything about our show anymore. That's so true. would you? That's would not you, true. I, re, I don't. First of all, I don't say anything about anything. I, I just retweet. I just like and retweet. I don't really put. I, just, I don't make up posts and Twitter for free either show. I just I see a tweet that I like. I, I post. I like it. I, I retweet it. That's the so that's inaccurate. Okay, you right. don't you okay, hold well, You're talking I just, honestly, I, I, that's I, I just I right? just caught you in such a freaking lie. Because here's here's strike two. That's strike one that you don't promote this show anymore because now you think you're a co host. Here's strike two. For a guy okay, so you just said to me, I don't make any original tweets, I just retweet. But when they're posted, like you guys posted, like you have the big, bro. People are gonna notice, you know, the the thing with the brand and stuff and all that. I mean, you, you, I, you know, what am I gonna retweet? What am I gonna tweet? Okay. Well, here, you know, well how, I mean, how about this? How about you tweeting tag this? Tag me in the tweet. People on my okay. timeline see right. the tweet promoting the show. Okay. What, what, who met? How about the how, like how about this tweet? What is going through your mind mm -hmm. when you are publicly tweeting? Mm -hmm. That the way I read my ad copy on the show is terrible and not with what what sponsors want. What what no, no, are you what are you time all, out, time out, let me finish. What are you doing? What's going on through, video? What's going through your mind when you make a comment like that and I am followed by some of the sponsors on this show? So explain to me what's going through your mind. If they watch the show, they're seeing the exact same thing that I'm seeing. You stumbling, bro. You can't even read. That's the funniest part about you when you read the. You did a good ad the other day on one of the shows where you talked about True Car, like for, for you know it was it was like it was made up of what you were reading verbatim the ad the other day, stumbling over the words, having to repeat the words again because you weren't reading correctly, bro. Do you know how bad that looks? What you're you supposed to be a. Like what? First of all, what kind of a dog? What, what kind tweeting, of a? No, what I'm kind tweeting of, something that happened on Twitter. Or, or that, something that happened on, on video. I'm not like I didn't. Of, what I didn't, kind, expose, I didn't expose anything. What you kind did of, this? What, let let me ask you a question. What kind of authority are you that you you know how to read ads on 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 on, on a show? How many ads have you read on your resume the, bro, that you could tell me how to read ads? Here's the point. If you were doing it audio, it would not be a problem. 
okay? But the advertisers don't want the people watching you looking down, <laughs> reading their ad, okay? That's 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 not that's ridiculous. That, could you imagine if commercials were on and no. the actors in the commercials <laughs> were yeah. looking at the script? Reading the script while they were per performing the commercials. That's yeah, oh, the, the oh, ad oh, is a commercial. Oh, okay. Oh, you, you know, oh, oh, you, know oh, you know what the concept of an ad is. Oh, you, you mean you mean like Howard Stern reads his ads? Oh yeah, oh, he he's yeah oh. he's never done anything in this business, bro. Are you? Did you just compare yourself to Howard Stern? I want to go to number three because this you is just the big. Compare yourself one. to Howard Stern. This okay? is the this is the big one, bro. This right. is the big one. Let me get back to the original story. Now you called me yesterday in the middle of my busy day. Asking me to do a, a favor for the Conan show, with, without okay. without saying anything, I said absolutely no problem. You know what? What do I got to do? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Conan calls me with his uh, producer KG. Mm -hmm. Is that Kevin Garnett? Is that his producer? Kevin Gill. He's good okay. guy. Kevin Gill. Okay. Now, we're waiting to shoot this thing. All of a sudden, I'm sitting there, and Conan starts putting over Raw to... Oh, for, wait, okay. wait, wait, no, no, can let I me, finish? Let me talk. Uh, the reason I called you to begin with, I get a phone call from Conan. He's telling me, hey, we need a sound bite to put in here for the segment we did with Hootie. Hootie, can you get in touch with Vince? Can he right, get us okay. a sound bite? No problem. Okay, so I'm not like, oh, sure, let me get We're in touch with Vince. We're all a family. We're all a family. No can problem. You, can you do this sound bite? They need a sound bite yeah. for the thing like, you know, right. stuff. Okay. All right, cool. That's it. That's so it. I'm like, whatever I issue you have no, 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 no. No, no, that no, is no, my no. input into no, this no, story no, 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 no. because Wait. that is all I No, did. no, no. There is a huge Every... issue. There is a huge issue with you here, Jeff. What statistics are we talking about? Okay. Talking about statistics? I, I, yes, I just went through. I just went through Glenn's timeline back to August 10th. So the ahead. last. Go days. ahead. Thank okay. you. Go ahead, Jeff. Tweets or retweets based on the Keeping It 100 podcast. 20. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Retweets or tweets based on Lions, Tigers, Bears, and Dirt. One. Oh, okay, twenty to one. Okay, I was wrong, Glenn. I was wrong. You could, you could say three if you want, but the the other two were people bashing you, and he retweeted those. So yeah. I don't okay, know. Okay, so twenty, yeah. 20, no, no, 20, no, that 20 to that one. Counts. Okay, so oh, twenty to one. I was Jeff. I was wrong. He tweeted about the show once. <laughs> okay, now let me get. You, I mean, you, you bro, you uh, retweet uh, this uh, thing. Here's the thing: you retweet the same thing over and over. Okay, okay. so it's like when I retweet that, it's like you know that that's bro, I. I Tweet the tweet, okay, bro. Stop, you're stop, only allowed, out. bro. You're only you, allowed to retweet things once. You can't okay. retweet things over and over. One time no, you no, can no, retweet no. something. You post the same thing. I see it. I retweeted it. That's when I see it. Kept the Conan show. They, they have different things on there. The only things you tweet, lions, tigers, bears. I I, I retweet that. But then the other ones you retweeted, you buried me. Okay. I did not retweet that. Yeah, you ain't okay. seen nothing so yet. Like, you ain't seen nothing yet. Do, you ain't seen nothing yet. What okay. I did do is retweet it when somebody okay. buried you. Okay. All right, let me, let me talk. So let me. You let, cannot uh, me for that. What let you me need talk. To do let is me post talk. More different tweets yeah. about the show. By the and way, I will retweet the different tweets. Okay. Jeff, by the would way, you agree that the, Jeff. Well, I'm time out. I want the moderator here. Would you? What? What, what would you? What, what's your take on that? Yeah, they do have a lot of different tweets. Okay, I just but, retweeted. Uh, I, I think Vince, you know? Vince has been changing his up the last week though too, because that's one of the things we were taught in our in our uh, online class that we were taking, and uh, okay. he's been, he's been changing up the wording, he's been changing up the topics. So I think in the last week he's he's changed that. Yeah. Okay. And well, by the way, also uh, well, let me tell you something too. So time out, time out, time out. Okay. The Conan show there is more of an appreciation. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, <laughs> and listen, the, uh, but, and listen, than, than you. Okay. So let's way, let's uh, not yeah, let's but, not ignore. Listen, okay. Let's not ignore that. Okay. Okay. That there is a, there is a level of appreciation given. Yeah. Well, on that other okay, show yeah, as a I, I, to this show. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate this. Listen, listen. Elvis called and he wants his pompadour back. All right, now I'm going to continue. So all okay. of a sudden we're waiting. He's waiting. I'm I'm, I'm waiting to do this thing. And all of a sudden, bro, like out of nowhere, Conan starts putting over Raw. Yeah, he likes Raw. I didn't know. Uh, up, 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 to nauseam. 
let mm-hmm. let let me let me say some of the things that he put over and how I he put know. them over. I mean, bro, bro, I'm do. talking to an audience of thousands out there. They don't know. Okay, I know you know. There's thousands of people out there that don't know. This is why you could never be the host of a show. You think no, we're just you are having a conversation. Oh, yeah. Trust me. Your, your, your burial will, will commence shortly on the yeah, show, okay, right? Okay, here we go. So I, I'm listening to Conan. I'm showing respect because I'm curious to, to think what Conan thinks is good about this horrible show. Conan starts telling me about the Kevin Owens – Chris Jericho interview in the back was the funniest thing he's ever seen in the wrestling business. He didn't say that. And I'm like, uh, okay. Then the the Owens uh uh Sami Zayn match at the last pay per view was one of the best matches he's ever seen in his life. Mm-hmm. And the storyline between Kevin Owens. And Sammy is like the, the greatest storyline he's ever seen in his life. Okay. So well, I'm, I, I, let me finish. I'm listening to all this, and I'm like, like I can't even believe that Conan's saying these things. And I just had to say, brother, we're, we're going to agree to disagree because I think the entire thing sucks. I don't. I, I did not see anything funny in Owens and Chris Jericho. The the, the storyline between Sammy Zayn and Chris and Kevin Owens are two friends that went awry. That's that's the great storyline. And as far as the 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 epic wrestling match they had, bro, they didn't sell one freaking single thing. So I said, Conan, wait, can I finish? I said, Conan, let's agree to disagree because, bro, we are way way off in agreement here. So now I hang up the phone with Conan. Let me tell you how the genius brain this is how the genius brain of Vince Russo works. I've never heard Conan put over raw like this before. And I've had a lot of conversation with Conan. Okay, well right. can I fin- I will let you go, bro. You just let get me so long winded, bro, and it's yeah, like you good. Know, and people ahead. sit on my every word, bro. No, they don't. They they turn they, as a matter of fact they're stopping they're they're not listening they're they're not yeah. tuning in. Bro, did, we'll you, discuss did, that you just, also. did you just say I stumble and bumble over words? It took you about thirty seconds to say something you could have said in ten. So I'm saying to myself, okay, why is Conan putting over Raw all of a sudden out of nowhere? So now all of a sudden the light bulb goes on my head. Oh jeez, bro. He's on Chris Jericho's podcast network. I'm like, Jericho gave him the spot. Conan can't bury Raw. You're and, wrong. And, okay, and, and and I'm like, okay, I understand that, but now all of a sudden, the second light bulb goes off in the head, and I'm like, oh wait a minute, wait a minute. The the you know the 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 lead guy with the shovel in his hand, Glenn Gilbernetti, has now all of a sudden, oh, we're, we're not going to knock Roar anymore, Vince. We're, we're going to wait. We're going to wait. We're going to sit back and wait. We're not going to knock Roar anymore. Oh, the same Glenn Gilbernetti now who thinks he's the co-host of Conan's show that was given to Conan by Chris Jericho. Oh, so oh, what a what a coincidence! Okay, so now we're gonna sit back here and we're gonna put over Raw, no matter how much the show stinks, and everybody knows it stinks because Chris Jericho gave us a podcast, bro. I have no problem with that, but tell me beforehand so I don't waste two weeks trying to figure it out. Now okay. the floor is yours. Go ahead. All right. I've been dying to say this, okay? Because I listen when I when I hang up. I go back and listen to the podcast, and I hear you guys after I'm gone. You know what you say. And bro, last week you two are sitting here. Now let's let's. How Jeff? How old are you? Thirty-seven. So you would consider yourself to be a grown man? Um, not mentally, no, probably not. Okay, Vince, how old are you? I'm fifty-five. Okay, so you consider yourself to be a grown man? Not at all. I'm an imbecile. Okay, well, so after the show is over, you and Jeff are sitting here literally, can I use the word gloating, talking about how 
you can't wait till after SummerSlam when the demon character just comes out as Finn Balor. Yeah, we'll show Glenn. We'll show... Bro, you're actually sitting there trying to act like there is a competition here, okay, over what our opinions are on the shows. Now, let me also furthermore tell you that you, you also know that the reason that some of the stuff that Conan likes about Raw, first of all, we do not, we have buried tons of stuff on that show. You haven't listened to the show. If something stinks, we bury it, okay? The reason that uh, um, Conan likes certain things on the show is because he watches it like I do. He fast forwards to the stuff that he wants to see and he fast forwards through the stuff that he doesn't. So we will watch, and it takes 20 minutes to watch the show. We both agree on that. The, show, the three hour show, we watch 20 minutes of stuff we want to watch. We may like a couple, we may like some of the things. Okay? We are not putting over a three hour raw because if you ask Cody in this when we're on the show next week, he will tell you there's no way I can watch that show from start to finish. All right? You two are the imbeciles that have elected to torture yourself through three hours of that show on a weekly basis because, time out, time out, Go ahead. because you feel you have to. Yep, for our paying customers. Yep. The time to keep your paying customers. Yep. Bro, okay, me and Conan do the same thing, and we watch the 20-minute version you're not, you're, condensed. You're, you're, cheating, right, the, you're so cheating the customers. How you're cheating, you're cheating, how, cheating how the customers? Cheating the customers? Because you, you can't. Time out. You're assuming time out. You're assuming that everybody comes on your show afterwards is sitting there watching that show from start to finish, bro. Your audience is not watching Raw from start to finish. It doesn't matter. The they're, people they're that are paying me. Show, they're paying bro, me. Does, they're paying the me to give a review, bro. The people that are listening to your show, okay, are not the people that are watching Raw for three straight hours and talking about how great it is. The people that are listening to your show are the ones that know it's no good. And bro, we have said you are falling into the trap of the person that we have always talked about that you're trying to be you should not be a part of their of their demographic you should not be a part of their rating you should not be because you have said we have said in the past when a show is not good what does the usual television viewer do stops watching the show right. you've elected to continue watching the show i will profess that probably if you could do a poll on this on your site if you ask the people, do you watch watch Raw from start to finish, I will bet you probably less than 25% of the people watch that show for three hours straight. Okay? So what you're doing is you're producing a show to an audience that does not exist. People that watch Raw for three straight hours. And you watch it Jeff, and you sit there talking Jeff, about it, bro. Jeff, and like all you Jeff, do is like you know, what happened? What happened, Jeff? What happened when we did the one raw review, bro? I think it was the first one, and we did not break the show down segment by segment by segment. What was the feedback, Jeff? Yeah, the VIP members didn't like it because they watch our live show because they want to hear us go through the thing bit by bit by bit. Bit but, by but bit I, by but bit. I, like, I think what it is, though, is this show was put on for three hours, and it's designed for people to watch it for three hours, not 20 minutes. So I think that's the point. With us suffering through it for three hours, we're getting the full scope of what the show is. I'm talking about this. You, you can't knock me for my opinions on it then. No, I'm knocking you for being a sellout. I'm knocking you for selling out. How am I that, selling you, out? You've totally danced around the selling out because you're on Jericho's show. And you've oh, turned it into, oh, Raw, I watched Raw 20 minutes, you watched Raw 3 no, I didn't. You've, turned, what? you've gone through every Conan, other avenue, but you did not this week, you sold you're out. Full, you're full of garbage. On this week on the Conan Show, we have a discussion about the the uh, the concept of putting squash matches on the show, which I think is the most ridiculous thing that you can do. Not to mention giving the guys the interview job. Bro, I criticize tons of stuff on that show. I honestly, okay, because I am a fan, all right, and like you know, I don't care what you say. I like the stuff that Jericho is doing on the show as a heel. Of course, because okay? you're on top Jericho show. Of course, not. I would be talking about it if I was doing just your show and not doing Jericho's show. All right, bro, so, you okay, need to tell me. Let me just... ask you that. Let me ask you. You mean to tell me if Jericho went out on next week's show in, in drag, dressed as a woman. I would bury him. I would bury bull, him. Bologna. Time out. Bologna, Time out. bro. Time I specifically, nothing. I talk about specifically the things I like. 
Okay? Conan liked the interview with Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho, right? He thought it was great. I thought it was all right. The only thing I did like, the thing I like about it, okay, is the fact that Jericho is very smart and that what he's doing is he's trying to be as unlikable as he possibly can be and now trying to pull Kevin Owens into that with him to try to make Kevin Owens as unlikable because, unfortunately, probably Jericho realizes this, Kevin Owens has fans that cheer for him. And I hope Chris Jericho is teaching Kevin Owens the art of being a heel, of trying to be disliked as much as you possibly can. Okay, so that that's that's what I like with what Jericho's doing on the show. The content, some of the lines he gives him. No, I'm not I'm not gonna put every, over everything he do he does, but I like the fact that him and the Miz stick out on that show as characters that know how to heal because they do things that most of the people dislike and is very hard to cheer for. If people are cheering for you, you are not doing your job as a heel. So that's like I'm not. That, that's all I'm saying. All right. So don't start, don't try to put words in my mouth. Don't try to say that I'm a sellout. Don't just say, bro. I give my. You said the show's about honesty. Yeah. I give my honest opinion every week. I told you I don't like Raw. I told you I'm like yo. I'm not impressed with the demon character, the other you know, Finn Balor. All I said was. I'm not criticizing it to this point because they haven't done anything, in my opinion, that I think that should that should be buried. In the future, that might happen, but like up to this point, if you want to if you want to forecast and foreshadow the burial of a character, go ahead, okay? Because you watch the show for three hours and you come out of that show with sheer misery every week because you subject yourself to the boredom and and the and the the loopholes and the booking and the logic on that show and stuff everything, I don't. I fast forward it. I, I read stuff online that I think I might want to watch. I watch it. Hey, that was pretty good. I, I watch it. Eh, that wasn't so good. Uh, you gotta understand, bro. I'm only watching the stuff that reads to me or people are putting over as the good stuff on the show. That is all I'm subjecting myself to. And I'm not going to agree all the time that the stuff that I'm watching is going to be good, but sometimes there are good things on that show, and I just point that out because that's what I watch. I'm not going to get in the the, um, the the conundrum here of you know burying everything because you watch it for three hours. You you do that every week, and I could do that every week if I watched it for three hours too. I elect not to. You will like to do that, okay? So that that's all I'm saying. Don't try to say that I'm a sellout and everything. I watch a show the way I want to watch it. Right? We don't elect to do anything. That's what the people pay for. We give them we give them their money's worth, okay? It, it, it's not a don't choice. It's for not a choice. All, first of all, what you do is when you carry that over into the other shows, you're alienating some of your other fans. Your VIP members maybe like to maybe like to hear your 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 breakdown of the show and stuff and all that, but your free customers. The customers you're relying on for advertising and stuff and everything are going to be turned off by the constant negativity that you provide on for, across the board on most of your shows. Okay, that that's a, that's an issue that you need to address because you're coming across as very bitter all the time on all of your shows. Okay, the VIP show that's fine if you want to do the raw review and bury everything and all that, but don't don't carry all that over you. You're an entertainer, bro. People people are trying to listen to this show. You have to be entertaining. Sometimes, like I say, I get onto you about it. Your constant negativity, over and over and over and over and over, gets it becomes not entertaining. Okay, I, that, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, but you because you, I think I think that Jeff, you, you, you think you, that is legitimate criticism you of sit what you there. guys no, 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 sometimes. You, I'm asking you, Jeff the question. Go ahead, Jeff. Quiet. I don't. Uh, I'm just. I've been watching the numbers, and I don't see any effect in the numbers. That my issue is, I don't think it's better for him to fake positivity of over a product that he strongly dislikes. That's no, dishonesty. I think honesty no, is never, better. Never, 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 never saying that. Never saying that. But constantly bringing up the topics over, like on a weekly basis. And we don't repeating. do that, Glenn. We. What, what are you even talking about? We don't do that. No, you, every, are, every, you are dying. Every, and don't every, tell me. Time. Every every day we have don't a different this. theme and a different don't show. We don't. We you don't talk about dying that. And waiting. You cannot wait. For the percent, the, the the perceived the demon character, the Finn Balor character to fail. No, okay? I don't give a so shit. I know Glenn, I don't know, give a I, shit. No, you're, you're, you're full of baloney. I don't because give a I shit. Hear you and, I don't I hear give you and, a shit. I don't. I care. hear you and Jeff on the show talking about you can't wait till he comes up because you want to stick it back to me. Because yeah, you that, think yeah. Because I want to stick it back. <laughs> <to> <laughs> that's humor. I don't care. I don't care if the guy fails. 
you know, see, you, you're, you're talking you care about it more than I do, obviously. Because obviously, I don't suffer obviously no. first of all, obviously you don't listen to our shows because we have a different theme every day. And when the theme doesn't warrant us talking about SmackDown or Raw, we don't. That's number one. I'm, number two, no, time out, nothing. Number two, if you would have heard the show, the very first SmackDown coming out of the gate, me and Jeff put it over to the moon. So, but don't come out here and say, "Oh, bro, you're bitter. You come across as bitter. You rip every show. Every show you're bitter." Don't don't say something that's not true. Because it's when it's don't when it's, it's good, don't give me perception, bro. When it's good, we say it's good. It's fine. Okay, okay so don't so don't out. say bullshit, you were, bro. You you did a show called Anything But Freaking Wrestling. <laughs> and you interviewed a wrestler and talked about Billy Corgan. <laughs> so what? But what happened to your anything but freaking wrestling show? I think you're supposed to talk about anything but freaking wrestling. You can't talk about anything but freaking wrestling. You're talking about wrestling five days a week. Why don't you talk about that one time a week of anything but freaking wrestling? Bucket full of chicken next hour is about wrestling. About like this. Everything's about wrestling. You're supposed to do a couple shows that aren't about wrestling. That's what I'm talking about. But because wrestling is not good right now, if you're doing five, six shows a week about wrestling, it's going to come across as very negative because you know and I know that the show is not good and that's your theme. My point is let's try to talk about some other stuff besides the fact that Raw is not good. The numbers are telling you it's not good. It drops every single week. It's getting below three, it's getting below three million, and now football's starting up, which is not going to bode well for them. They could be around 2.5 million viewers, which is around the number of what? Back when TNA was getting its best numbers, all right? So we know this, and we know this is going to happen. I don't like to harp on it because I know it's going to happen. You know it's going to happen. There's nothing to discuss. Everybody, all these listeners know that we know it's going to happen too. So it's like to, to, to dissect why, why it's going to happen. This is why you don't have a show, and this is why you're jaded because you're the co-host of the Conan show that's on once a week. You have no idea what it is to do a show five times days a week. And until you do, you don't know what you're talking about, bro, because you That's, would understand oh, sure you would un week. you would understand when you have to deliver a show 5 days a week, you're going to wind up talking about things that you really don't want to talk about. You don't understand that because you've never done a show five days a week in your life, bro. You come on, you do these little co-host stints, and you think that's all there is to it. So you, you have no yes. idea of what it takes to put on five to ten hours of programming a week, bro. No idea. Yes. Yes. What Predominantly, what is the... What are you? What is your viewers' opinion? Your listeners' opinion of the the, the best show that Vince puts on each week, and, and who is on it? Lately, it's been this one. This one has been the most yeah, feedback. Thank, thank you, thank you. Okay, so like this is what I talk about. Where there's a lack of appreciation, you know. <laughs> so here I am. You know, Jeff is telling bro. Everybody knows that this is the best show. Because I don't come on here and just sit there and, and agree, have, have, have an echo chamber of just agree with everything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disagree with you on some things and try to, like, you know, you know give my opinion. You're, the problem is, is you look at this as like a competition sometimes. Like, you, like the, that you're right and I'm wrong. There's nothing to measure any of this. We both know that the, that the, uh, you we really both know that the show is not good. Where, where, listen, listen, I know, bro, listen, you know, let me, let me just say this first, Jeff. I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off. How in your mind, how, like, honestly, how can you make the statement and honestly believe, I think this is a competition? Bro, I don't, give a, like one. I don't give a shit if you're right or you're wrong. It doesn't mean, I don't give a shit if you're <laughs> right or you're wrong. I don't give a Dude. shit if Finn Balor gets over or he doesn't get over. None of that is going to affect my life. For you to sit there and think, it, it, it when you're on the show, it affects my life so much that it's become a competition. Like, are you out of your freaking mind, bro? It, it's a bro. Everything I just said is a hundred percent truth. Or else you wouldn't talk about me when I hang up. Next week, you guys were discussing. You can't wait to laugh. What? What are you guys waiting for after SummerSlam? For what? Did this not come out of you guys' mouths that you can't wait to see what happens? When the demon character comes out after this, the day after SummerSlam, and we'll, you know, we'll see what you know, we'll, we'll see what happens and stuff. Did you not say that? But you're trying to use that as a point that like, okay, you guys are right and I'm wrong. 
That's, no, no, no. that's that's a hundred percent, Jeff. Don't I said we wouldn't. Up. No, no. I said we wouldn't know what's going to happen. I'll have people go back and listen to El Lions, Tigers, Bears, and Dirt last week when I hang up the call when when I'm when I'm dropped. Tell your listeners to go back and listen, and you tell me what you think and what they think. The theme was of what you guys were trying to point out. They're like, oh well, we're going to show Glenn next week. They're not going to show me nothing. I don't care. <laughs> I so it's like, that. you know, that's, that's no. the whole. I could yeah. be wrong. I'm just going by track record. But we'll know the day after SummerSlam right. Right. Who, who was right on the whole deal. All right. I'm laughing because I know you think very highly of yourself. I never thought you thought this highly of yourself, that I'm actually in competition with you to yes. be right over you, bro. You sound honestly. like every week. And then you just sound like a twin. You, we, you, you just well, you just went in competition with Conan because you're going to agree to disagree. Jeff, so it's Jeff, like, no, you know, no. what I believe I said, and this is what I believe because I have a bad memory, but I believe what I said. But we won't <laughs> know. We, to it. we won't know anyway until the day after SummerSlam. Right. We'll see then. But I didn't but say big, like, big, haha, big, Glenn's cool. going to be wrong. No, no, no. no that <laughs> trust me, your tone was very similar to that. But let me ask you something. What the day after? What, what do you think is going to happen? He'll either come out of the demon as he won't. But th this okay, is but what the big deal if he does. What if he does? The, the rating's not going to go up or down based on the fact that whether he comes out as a demon and stuff or whatever. The, the, here's the thing that you guys are talking about that character. You actually think that like they're because he they, he doesn't come out as the demon every week. Is like you know all this, bro. The demon character coming out every week is not going to make the raw rating go up or down or stuff. In it. It's just a that this is my point. The way they're producing the character. Is not going to change getting the casual fans, getting the old people. Everything. It's just the way they're producing it. I got no no problem with them producing a Peter Parker Spider-Man on the same show. Okay, go ahead. I mean, the writing is probably very basic and plain, but it's it's not the same as like trying to produce you know another Sting character where he comes out of the face paint every single week and stuff. Everything when he's not Sting and never will be Sting or as popular as Sting. That's all I'm saying. It's like I'm not I'm, I'm not being critical of it because he's not coming out as a demon every week. That that's my point. It's not going to affect the rating, bro. So not, we, we know it's not going to go up. We know they're not costing themselves casual viewers. We, we know that that's what it is. So it's like, you know, that's my point. Go ahead. I, I'm, I'm, wait, I'm waiting for you to do the true car ad. No, go ahead and do the no, true go car ad. No, go ahead. Go, go. Tell me, show me how to do an ad. Go, true car. Bro, they want me to get over here that they sell used cars as good as new. Go ahead, bro. Go. If you want to buy a used car, you can buy it on True Car. They just don't sell new cars anymore. Now they sell used cars on True Car. It's the easiest app to search for used cars. That they you can average saving three thousand and change on the average for a car. They'll tell you if you if you're looking for a car, you go on the True Car app and they'll tell you whether it's a good deal or a bad deal based on the price it's given. If you're shopping for a car, a new car or a used car, use True Car. To do your shopping for you, and you will have an enjoyable shopping experience. This, that, this is why you don't have your own show. I just proved. I'm not reading point. the ad, bro. I, I, I'm just, you know, I don't have to read the ad. You forgot though the True Car app or TrueCar.com. Yeah, so TrueCar.com. Right. It would be nice for you to mention TrueCar.com in there so they kind of know where to well, find True Car. First of all, you've been very clear. This is not my show. This is yours. Why don't you do it? Can I cut your tongue? Yeah, 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 because I'm so I, I like I'm yeah, so like, disgusted with you. Like the sight of you, the yeah, sight of you right you now, the sight of you up. right now is making me sick in my stomach. I, I shut you up. The sight of you, the sight of you, the side of you because shut. you come on here and you say you're bitter about everything, and, and 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 you only listen to the freaking show that you're on. But when 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 I'm sitting here and I'm putting over. Dolph Ziggler and Dean Ambrose to their in ring, and a lot of unpredictable finishes in SmackDown, and I'm putting that over to you. That's that translates into bitter. No, no, time out. As if your your mother in law comes to visit you, and all she does is sit at the dinner table every day and talk about how how bad her health is. You know, over and over and over and over. It's just like, oh, hey, can man. we talk about something else? Uh, Ma, you know, like, like hey, the, let's talk about the Giants. Well, they stink too. Okay, well, let's talk. What are we going to talk about? Let's talk about Glenn's <laughs> fantasy football Okay, team. You, you know what? Bro, bro, this, is one key fact, though. Though. this is one key fact that, that I'm not going to say specifics because it's not everybody's business, but there was one particular number that I had been studying, and we changed something on it, which was not talking about the current product. That number dropped significantly. Well, of course. No, so they people. want to hear him talk of about course the he, product. The, yes, this is a wrestling show. Obviously, most of these Jeff, things are wrestling. Okay, things. You Jeff, have to, Jeff, you Jeff, have to Jeff, talk Jeff, about Jeff, the current Jeff, product. Is, 
this but is, you don't have to. You don't have to talk about it ad nauseum. You, Jeff, you, you know this is, Jeff, this is what he's talking about. Let, 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 let me explain to you what he's talking about. Okay, prior prior to the All Star break, the, the 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 Giants are twenty games over five hundred. Since the All Star break, they're nine and twenty something. They're horrible. Guess what, bro? On on the daily Giant shows, Jeff, they don't talk about the Giants anymore. They talk about other things. Because the Giants have been horrible for the last two months. So on the Giant broadcast, where they're talking about the Giants and baseball, they choose not to talk about the Giants anymore because the Giants think. They talk about going out uh, to dinner, and they talk about maybe going to church, and they talk about other things on TV. They don't yeah. talk about the Giants anymore because the Giants suck. You know what they're probably that, that, doing? That's what you just it's, said, bro. No, 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 no. Tell me, you know what they're doing? They're probably drawing other fans that aren't Giant fans to the yeah, show. Okay. We got to take some stuff off of this. You're we welcome. can't. We can't talk about Billy Corgan and TNA because TNA's ratings are in the shitter. Uh, we can't talk about Shawn Michaels and him working at the Performance Center because. Uh, 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 WWE is in the shitter. We can talk about Sonny and Brooke Adams because they're not working for either company. We can talk about Triple H and his 50-50 booking because WWE is in the shitter. And we can't talk about why former stars aren't returning to WWE because WWE is in the shitter. So no, that no, will no, leave no, no, that. Stop. We could talk about stop Sonny it. and Brooke. Go ahead. No, my point specifically is we don't. You don't talk about Raw. Okay, there's a lot of other topics. If you you keep misinterpreting what I'm saying, I don't want to talk about the the you know the we we can we can bury the booking on right. Raw and Nausea right. and do it every week. Right. Listen, we these want, are stories that are not pertinent to Raw. Let's talk and we about don't it. want and we don't want to piss off Chris Jericho. So let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about Jeff. What are we talking yeah, about, bro? What are we talking about, bro? I don't want to piss off Jericho. Okay, well I'm going to go through the format as as I, I don't I did, I, did not, I did not agree to the format. Yes, 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 I do know that, but. You've talked about this a little bit, Vince. We haven't heard Glenn's thoughts. But the, well, if, if I've talked about it already, I can't talk about it again. So let Glenn, no, not let's true. get, let's not, get well, Glenn's spin on well, it. Well, I, I think there is a portion of it that you didn't address because you, you, you pretty much gave your personal feelings on the Billy situation. Like, I want to know what your, your professional opinion on this, what you think this is going to do for TNA based on the facts outlined in that press release. Because obviously that's the only facts we got to go on at this point. Other... Um, that, that have come out anyway. Uh, I know Billy plans on coming on this show. I'm sure we'll get a lot more information out of that. But professionally, what does this do for TNA in both your opinions? Oh, I think it's great. It's fantastic for them. I mean, giving Billy more and more creative power, right? I mean, we know how brilliant the guy is. The guy, you know, give him, give him a chance. Like I said it's very difficult to, to criticize this from, from the get-go because this is we, we all agree this is the correct move. So, like, you know, I'm, I'm very interested to see the type of... Uh, you know, based on the, the 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 interview he did with Vince, the guy obviously is a very has a great vision, a very interesting vision, an outside the box vision of what wrestling should be. He agrees mostly with uh, the um, what he called the traditional things of wrestling that are being ignored today that need to be reintegrated back into the product. So I am definitely looking forward to uh to what Billy Corgan. But you know, bro, he he like I said, all I know about the guy so far, you know, to, to you know, for criticism here, he's a big picture guy. Whether that can translate into putting on two hours of compelling television, episodic TV every week to gain an audience, we don't know yet. But I'm, I'm, I'm definitely interested. I mean, probably like you, Jeff, you're interested to see what's going on, right? Yeah. Well, I think, and and obviously this is just opinion. I don't know him personally, but by watching all the interviews I, he's done with Vince, my opinion is I feel like. He legitimately wants the company and everybody in it to succeed. This isn't a I want Billy Corgan to succeed deal. He genuinely wants everybody in the company and the company to succeed. So I think, you know, if I'm correct on that, that that's the type of person you want, you know, married with the creative genius that he has in his head. Jeff, Jeff, have you ever thought about what this show would be like, the Lions, Tigers, Bears, and Dirt show, if it was just me and you and not Vince doing this on a weekly go, basis? Go ahead. I'm, I'm <laughs> ahead. Go, Jeff, have you, you've go. never thought of that? I no, because I'm, not, be I'm not very confrontational over opinions. I'm confrontational with people throw insults at me. Well, uh, you were very you were very confrontational at the end of the show when he hung up and we wanted we couldn't wait to beat Glenn, bro. Oh, yeah, I got to remember that. Very confrontational. Listen, it was yeah. very it was very gloating. 
uh, you know, very like giddy. You know, that those are the two words I want to use: gloating and giddy. I got. Okay, I'm two listening two to this when we get off here. And giddy Can we get to the uh, the next story? Is Shawn Michaels in the performance center? Can I say some about this? Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, if you don't I want to add anything, to I the think thoughts. quite. Well, bro, first, I'll let Jeff tell the story. Jeff has to introduce the news. Here's the thing. Let me say real quickly. With Bill. Wasn't Jeff supposed to introduce the news first? He's going to stay on Billy real quick. There's Billy, There's Billy. Bro, this is the key to the success of every wrestling company, and this is where a lot of wrestling companies fall short. There's Dixie Carter now who's supposed to be doing the, 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 the big picture business type of things. There's Billy Corgan who's supposed to now be heading creative, and there's John Gaborik who I would assume is going to continue a role in talent relations. Bro, as long as everybody stays in their lane and they stick to what they're supposed to do, everything will be fine. But that's the problem a lot with wrestling. You know, people, you know, all of a sudden the lanes start crisscrossing and this guy could do this better and that guy could do this better and then all of a sudden it's it's a big mess. If everybody does what they do best, it's going to be a positive for TNA. It's been announced that Shawn Michaels is going to be training at the Performance Center and I've read two different things, and one was that he had moved to Florida, and another one was I thought Triple H had said that he's considering if he's going to move or not, and he's going to let him know. But either way, it looks like he's going to be there doing some training with the students. I, and it may be temporary. I think he's, they said he was filling in for somebody right now. But, man, if they Terry can, Taylor. That's surgery. Yeah, that's, that's who surgery, it was. Yeah. It was Terry Taylor, yes. He's so a finishing they, coach, by the way. He's the last guy that, they, that the students go through before they go to TV. I mean, he trained Daniel Bryan. I mean, he's trained guys, so obviously he, he can train. I don't know if he can. Um, I don't know. It's just I'd like to. I would. Here's the thing about about. I want, here's what I would like to know. And there's no way to really put a formula on this. I want to know like like professional wrestlers that have been have gone through the WWE developmental, and if you could do metrics on them of what they've learned from who that who who taught them, and when they do it in the ring, who did they learn it from, and why did they do that? Okay, and then this, you could probably never figure that out, find that out. But I, that is what I would like. If I could like sit down and like go over, like be, be with a, a guy that was from the developmental school, and and went over one of their matches that they've had on WWE TV, and ask him like, okay, this, yeah, hey, who taught you that? Well, why why do you do that? Who who taught you to sell like that? Who, who taught you? I, I'd be interested to find out who is teaching them what specifically, what they're learning from each specific guy. And what you know, why, and why they're doing it? You'll never find that out. But of course, being given the knowledge that Shawn Michaels has, who is arguably the greatest wrestler in the history of professional wrestling, can't possibly be a negative. Okay, and that, like if they can take five percent of the the ability and knowledge that he has and bring that to the show, it'd probably be worth a hundred percent more to it to whatever their character is. You know, so I mean, like you know, so Shawn Michaels is. You know, I mean, I, I'm talking. You know, Kevin Nash uh, and Hunter and all those guys basically drove up and down the road with with that guy. You know, and got got their knowledge from Sean. You know, Sean taught those guys kind of like how to work. I gotta you know, say this. Knowledge. I gotta say this because did you just say that Shawn Michaels is perhaps the greatest wrestler in the history of wrestling? Yeah. I gotta challenge that because I think that would be Chris Jericho, and and I gotta tell you, uh, Jeff, I don't know how Chris Jericho did not get this spot. Because if you're going to put anybody in this spot, it should have been Chris Jericho. The fact that Shawn Michaels got this spot over Chris Jericho is a travesty. And for you to sit there and say Shawn Michaels is perhaps the greatest wrestler of the world, that means he's better than Chris Jericho. I, I, take, I take exception to that. Jeff, what's next? Sonny and Brooke Adams, who is also Brooke Tessmacher, got into it on Facebook. Sonny had an issue with these women posting photos of themselves naked and pregnant, um, which Brooke has been doing. So after Sonny's criticisms, Brooke had posted this, and I will try to edit myself here. But she says, first let me sorry in advance my foul mouth. I, I usually would never lower myself down to someone's level like hers, m meaning Sonny. But this has to be said to defend myself and other soon-to-be mommies. I re was recently forwarded some ugly comments about myself and other women posting disgusting pregnancy photos. The disgustings are in quotes because that's what they were called. 
Her expressing how gross it is and that no one wants to see that and blah, blah. After going through pregnancy, I have a newfound love for all mothers and the courage it takes to love yourself in and out no matter how you look. I can't tell you how many beautiful messages I've got asking me where I get my courage to love every part of this process and to thank me for sharing it. Because of idiots right here, first off, you are a washed-up drug addict. You are also a whore for any amount of money and recently just did a porno for some extra cash. Bravo, formerly known as Sonny, but now just trash Tamara Sitch. We are all so proud of you. You say congrats at being proud of your baby bump, but the world doesn't need to see it, right? Oh, but you're so proud of your vagina at your age, you want to show the entire world for nickels in a porno? LOL. Huge accomplishment right there. It's stupid asses like you that scare other women out of being themselves and out of sharing what they want to share on social media. It's stupid asses like you that put fear in women's minds so they can't be strong and confident in their own skin. I mean, I'm not sure why I am so surprised you aren't a role model for anyone. So for all the mommies and soon-to-be mommies out there that want to show off how proud they are of their bodies, we all say go F yourself. This photo was just for you. I hope it makes you want to vomit. And she put up a picture of her pregnant. So Sunny responds, I love when people get tough behind a computer. No guts to say anything to your face. When you have a WWE Hall of Fame ring, you'll have room to talk. Until then, when you work for a second-rate company that can't even run house shows because they suck so bad and are on some obscure cable network, shut your mouth. It's nothing for me to choke a horse-faced bee out. For the record, about a month ago, I posted that I thought pregnant women should keep their naked pregnancy pics private. I did not name anyone or single anyone out. It was a generalized statement. Well, last night, a former TNA girl took it upon herself to take offense to it and call, and call me out in a very nasty rant. Okay, you have courage behind your keyboard. You are in the wrong here. I never even saw your photos. Good for you. You're pregnant. You're proud of it. There must be some insecurity, though, if you took my generalized statement and made it directed at you. Grow the F up. You're a kid. We need an adult to look up to, not some horse-faced bee that acts like a child. You may have just started a war that, believe me, you don't want to battle. And then Brooke came back one more time. Sonny, if I ever saw you in person, trust me, I'd be glad to say it to your face. This has nothing to do with being tough through a computer. I have zero relationship with you and will never come in contact with you, so this is how I will have my voice heard. You bash all new younger talent because you're just an ate up jealous hag, so why not a pregnant woman next, right? And you weren't the tough one first bashing me for being a proud soon-to-be mom without actually saying my name. At least I have the balls to state the direction of my message so I can be sure you know it's for you, sweet cheeks. I wouldn't expect that from you, though. We all know how weak you are because most of your nights end looking down an empty pill bottle, a needle in your arm, or some random dick in your ass for $5. And that Hall of Fame ring you have, the one you want to try and throw in my face as, as if it's some value to you worth, what happened to it? Oh, yeah, you sold it. Something that you should have cherished and been proud to keep. The only real thing you ever accomplished, you sold. Um, that's how pathetic you are. And for the record, I don't care who you are or if you actually had real accomplishments. It doesn't give you a free pass at being an a-hole and disrespecting other women. You can bash my wrestling career. It has zero effect on me. My life has never revolved around it. And then she goes through a few things and says, but hey, keep begging for money and selling your old vagina for a cheap porno flick because the only thing you have ever accomplished in this world is being in the Hall of Fame, so you're worthless to society. Most people are clues to who you even are from this generation, uh, the exception of those who remember you from 20 years ago who buy your Skype videos. I imagine they must be lining up for you. So keep holding on to the one tiny thing you have left with no ring to even show for it. You have zero relevance whatsoever. You should actually send me a thank you card for giving you this much attention. Vince, did you write this? Is no. they're coming to a Smoky Mountain Pro to have a no, match? Is I'm, that gonna, the, uh... I, I'm getting some good <laughs> ideas, though, to write something like this about you after the show. And then you're going to what, bring me to Smoky Mountain Pro? <laughs> the, the Smoky Mountain Pro. Bro, you gonna do a show here? You gonna to, to go go do text messages? Bro, huh? can I ask you a question? Why, like, what, like, I, like, listen, I, I know whatever I say, like, Sonny's gonna, there's gonna be fu's Vince by Sonny. Oh like, yeah, she didn't, didn't, didn't she cuss you up and down? Yeah, she, she cussed me out, bro. When when somebody uh, was <laughs> acting like me online and it wasn't even me. So she cussed me up and down, right? So so I know, but like I like what like. <laughs> why, why would somebody have a 
problem of a woman, you know, <clears throat> being proud of her baby bump and looking forward to. I just what like why would you why would you care like what why why would you care enough to write something about that? Like I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Maybe she's killing the prego porn gimmick. <laughs> so, I don't know. Hey, isn't she? Didn't Brooke? Didn't she marry to Robbie E? No, no, no. no, no. Who's Brooke Adams? Wait, who, who's Brooke Adams? They, they used to be together. They're not together anymore. I don't. I don't know. But wait, so Brooke Adams is pregnant? Yeah. Yeah. Rumors. Who's, who's, uh, Scott who's Casey Gale. <laughs> Scott yeah, Casey no, Gale is rumored to is, be the father. No, who is the father? Is, is the guy in the business or anything? No, or what, what I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think. So she is she married? Yes. Okay, but we don't and know who. Not, and and Brooke, listen, not not for anything. First of all, a couple of things. Brooke Adams is not a horse face. I mean, come on, that that's reaching a little bit. She's a beautiful woman. <laughs> right. uh, um, she cuts a good promo. She's not hiding behind a computer. Let me tell you something. I know Brooke, and she's she's one tough girl. And Brooke would not say anything behind anybody's back that that she wouldn't say to their face. I mean that that that's a fact too. But I just don't know why Sonny would care if somebody's posing preg. I don't, I just don't understand that. Yeah, it's just a Facebook rant or Twitter rant, whatever. Who, yeah. who knows, you know? So not necessarily on who's right or wrong here, but who won the argument based on these? Uh... Oh, Brooke. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah I those promos were more scathing than Sunny's were. I mean, like, yeah, uh, I, I have to go. She had more, she had more to work, more material, though. Yeah. yeah. She's, yeah. All she is is pregnant. You know, <laughs> the other one's got a lot. Of, and that's not even like a negative, really. You know, right? Yeah, and, and Sunny, Sunny well, may have come that. back after that, me, but I, I don't have much time for this. No, let me ask a better question here. Who was the baby face? That's a good question. Well, I I, I would have to think it's got to be Brooke just because she was pre she's pregnant. You know what I mean? So I would have to think she's pregnant. She's proud of her baby bump. I would have to think she'd have to be the baby. Yeah, friend. but she didn't exactly take the high road with the promo. So maybe yeah. this is like her the beginning of her heel turn. Yeah, yeah. You you know <laughs> you, you know all about taking a high road. All right, what's next, Jeff? Triple H was asked about 50/50 booking, and that's you know that's a big criticism by people in the business, fans online. They're always talking about 50/50 booking, and he says, "This was to ESPN. When somebody goes, well, you can't get people over with 50/50 booking. I'll always say, oh, I'm sorry. How's your territory coming? Because this one seems to be doing pretty good over here. We just had the largest WrestleMania in history. People talk a lot of smack about ratings and things, but they don't understand all all of the dynamics of everything we do." They don't. They sit on the internet and they read one thing and they give their point of view. Booking is a feel. You go along with it with what you feel. That's how I do it. The feel of the right place to go to move these pieces in place. I look at it as a fan and what do I want to see? Everybody has a different style and a different philosophy. None of it is right and wrong. It's chocolate. It's vanilla. It's all these different things that they're different flavors. And at the end of the day, the long-term success of your business and your company. You can say what you want about it, but there's a pretty good track record for a lot of it. Uh, he also went on to say, people don't understand it when Vince will say it's not about wins and losses or those things. Do they matter? Sure. Are they the be-all, end-all? Absolutely not. I suppose there's a stone somewhere that it's written on that says, thou shall not book 50-50 because it won't lead to success for your promotion. We'll stand on that stone while we're, while we're selling out Brooklyn three days in a row. Go ahead. Blakey's bringing, yeah, Blakey's bringing up the WrestleMania and the SummerSlam crowds. Like that, bro, it's the same people every year. You know, it's, like, it's, it's, not, it's not hard to put up, put, put on shows. For it's, it's a convention. If you can't sell at your convention with all your media marketing, I mean that that that'd be embarrassing. You know, of course you're gonna sell out WrestleMania. But, but bro, they, they could be drawing 1.0s. Like literally, that they could have like no television on it. They could lose the network. They they could lose the USA Network deal and just be on the WWE Network, and they'll still sell out Brooklyn three days in a row for SummerSlam, and they'll still sell out WrestleMania because that niche audience will travel to go see the shows. That's, you know, it's that simple. Here's the funniest thing about booking, and then, and, and the, when people even talk about 50-50 booking the matches, the, their in-ring product, the funniest thing about it is like people really put a focus on the in-ring product today, right? Like, like the focus on wrestling and everything. Bro, give me one record of one professional wrestler, what's the win-loss record? Just one guy. Does any professional wrestler have a win-loss record? So what? So who, if, if we're not even keeping track of the wins and losses, why should anybody care what what the who who wins and loses the matches? But the funniest thing is we want to focus on the matches, you know. <laughs> so we're so we're basically focusing on we're trying to 
let people suspend the disbelief that professional wrestling is real. They're fake fighting, but we're not even keeping record of who wins and who loses. We're not putting it in the record books. They're just doing it. So, so, so think about that as, as, as a flawed like a, a, a flawed system of, of booking in, in general. You know, I mean, I, I, I think that to me that's always been the funniest thing. So try, trying to put over the fights is real, but like, okay, but we're not keeping the guy's records. Like you're just introducing the fighter. You're, you're not introducing his, his weight, his statistics. He's just going out on the show and he's fake fighting somebody. And we're, we're supposed to believe that that's important. It's like that's why I fast forward through the matches just wait through the finish. It's so obviously not, I want to see, see who wins. So maybe, the, you know, not that I'm keeping – maybe I'll keep the – maybe I'll like, – you know what we should start doing? Start keeping the records. <laughs> Brock Lesnar. I bet you there's you know, people. Brock Lesnar, eighty. Brock Lesnar, two hundred forty six and thirty seven versus John Cena, five thousand four hundred sixty four. You know, eleven hundred and twenty three is his record. You know, I was gonna have like six thousand matches in his career. Like something like, come on, right? But Vince, before you go, because I want to piggyback off what he said. You know, they're bragging about selling WrestleMania in SummerSlam, and like you said, Glenn, they're they're gonna sell out anyway. I remember going to a house show in college, a WWF house show, right when the Attitude Era was getting hot. The house show was sold out. That's when you can brag. When you're selling out shows that don't matter, that's right. when you can brag. Right. You go to house shows now, there's more empty seats than, than butts in the seats. Yeah. You know, that, that's my issue with that whole thing. Well, is, you know, I'm going to be the devil's advocate. Uh, I think Triple H is brilliant. I think 50-50 booking is brilliant. Uh, and obviously the shows that they're putting out on Monday night are phenomenal, uh, spectacular, uh, must-see TV. So, um, you know, I disagree with you guys. So what's next? You know what you're doing right now? It's like you're just proving to everybody yeah. that you are a child. No, I'll that be That you positive. are immature. I'll, I'll that you're not positive. a grown man and an adult. I'll be but you're, you're trying, you're trying See, to make a mockery. I can't win. I can't win. I'll be putting over the booking. I'm putting, like, you know, I'm putting like, over the booking. I'm putting over the ratings. I can't win. I, well, well, I can't win. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're just you're trying to make – you're trying to be sarcastic, okay, and trying to make you – you're, you're, oh, you're, you're being, phony. You're, you're, you're being, being negative. You're being a, you're you're being being a bitter. phony. You're being negative, right bro. First of you're all, you're being you negative. Up, time out. You opened up this show, and your first thing that you said was that you yeah. pride yourself on being honest. Yeah. And what you're doing right now is a complete and direct contradiction. No, I'm being positive. I want, being I want to be as positive. Fake I'm being as positive. Possible, bro, as phony as the possible. The perception is as I'm bitter. Fraudulent, I'm bitter. Fraudulent I'm bitter. I'm bitter. I'm, see, I can't win, Jeff. I'm trying fraud. to be positive Word about Triple Ash. H. I'm trying to be positive about the 50 50 booking. I'm trying to be positive about Raw, and now I'm, I'm lying. So, so what is it? Tigers, bears, and frauds. Yeah. That's what we should call this show. Because you, sir, are a fraudulent human being, portraying a you are you are a gimmick right now, uh, just a, a caricature on a show that you wanted to come in here and bring me on and pride yourself on well, being honest. Well, okay, you want me to be like, honest, Jeff? Be honest. Let, let me say this. Let me say this about Triple H's comments. I will say this if you want me to be honest. You ready, Jeff? Yeah. With all due respect to Triple H, as great as he is, a prof a performer, uh, 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 you know, a uh, uh, you know, an office guy, a booker, as great as he is, with all due respect, there's only one person that should be booking this show, <laughs> and his name is Chris Jericho. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. What's next? There's been some rumors floating around about why a lot of bigger stars have not returned to the WWE with the brand split with these roster spots and they're bringing in, you know, lesser popular guys. And one of the reasons is is because these guys are apparently would be making less money to go and do that. They're making more money on the indies. They're they're saying that there's people in TNA making more money than these people in WWE because of what they get paid per appearance. And so this is the reason why apparently, this is just a rumor, but apparently why MVP didn't go back because he would be making less money and, and a lot of these other guys aren't aren't going back. You know, that makes sense. I, I, I can buy that based on the names that they have brought back and the names that they haven't brought back. Like, to well, me, not, not, the, the people that want to bring back aren't Marks. 
They've been on. They've already done the TV thing for years and years and years. Why would you go back for let me? Just because they're selling out Brooklyn three days in a row and selling out WrestleMania, you still got to go wrestle in Peoria, Illinois, Rockford, Illinois, and and St. Louis on a three day loop. And in Rockford and Peoria, there's only going to be about eighteen hundred to two thousand people there, and you're probably going to get paid four hundred to five hundred bucks. So it's like you know you still have to go do that if they if you want to come back. So it's like that's you know why do that when you can go on an indie show somewhere else and make yourself two thousand, you know like 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 a, where you can make a guarantee every night and know where you're getting paid as opposed to going on the road in towns where you know the show is not doing good TV ratings so you know it's probably not going to draw a good house. So you know I mean that's that that's that's the common sense thing. I'm, I'm you know the guys are not marks. The new guys are the marks. Not, not, the, not the guys that have already done it, you know? That, that's, that's the deal. Yeah, but let me ask you this, Glenn. Um, do you – do you, I, I agree with what you're saying, and you're right. But, but, bro, everybody's got a price. You know everybody's got a price. So yeah, if the they price give, is – They don't give guarantees. You work on the house in, in New York. That, that's how it works. Right. That, that's my point. You know, if you got to go on, if you got to go work for them, they want to put you on the road. You don't know how much you're going to make because they, 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 you paid on the house, and you, you're looking at the show and like, you know, who's on top? You know, you got to go work and work, work a show where, uh, you know, where, where, where um, you know, Ambrose is wrestling, um, is wrestling Ziggler on top in in Peoria, Illinois. You know, what's what's that going to draw? You know, they're they're not like they weren't they weren't like a list stars like 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 these other guys and stuff and all that. So that that that's the problem. But you know, do you, I mean, do, but you do you think do you think they didn't want to pay these guys their worth or they couldn't afford to pay these guys their worth? The, bro, they don't they don't give guarantees. But they could if they that's, if that's, they want they could if they wanted them bad enough. They could do whatever they want. Yeah, but then you would have to then you would have to do it to everybody. Bro, they haven't done it in twenty something years. What what would you think yeah. they do now? Maybe Brock has a guarantee. And I bet you these people are saying say, okay, what's Brock getting paid? Well, if I'm if you're paying Brock to go stand in the ring, you know, ten times a year and wrestle three matches, I go, I want, I want, you know, <laughs> I got to be worth more than wrestling in Peoria, Illinois, for five hundred bucks. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, Vince, because you had said something to me on the phone, but it's just interesting. Like, how can the Indies pay more than WWE to these guys? Does it become money marks? Because Vince McMahon's not a money mark. That's why Vince McMahon's successful. He's not a money mark. That's why Vince McMahon can't afford to pay Brock Lesnar. You know, to, to be on every show. Because Brock Lesnar wants he's not a money mark. He's not gonna give away his money. You know, that that's that's why he is a billionaire. That's why he has thirty five million shares of WWE stock. That's that that's why his company, regardless of their T V ratings, is still doing great business. Because he's not a money mark. There are tons of money marks out there that think if they they you know that that think if they book the Disco Inferno on their show, they're going to draw two thousand people in a, in a gym. And when seven when when nineteen hundred and fifty people show up in the short, you know, so it's like you know the uh, you know so no, but I'm just saying there's the, that that's you'd rather make money off the money marks that are that are giving you a guarantee to show up. And there's there's a lot of them out there, a ton of them, you know. You know that, they that's... could they could draw twenty thousand uh, people at an indie show if Chris Jericho Chris were Jericho allowed to work yeah, uh, right, indie yeah. shows. I just want to say that. I just want to say that for the record. I just want to say that for the record. Your whole thing is you're just embarrassing yourself. I'm going to send right this now. show. I'm going to send this show to Chris Jericho. How about that? I'm going to send this show to Chris Jericho. Well, go so I, go I ahead. Could, I could get in. I could fall in favor with him. You know, let me ask you a question. Why do you care about? Kissing up to Chris Jericho, Don't kiss up but to yet Chris you come on here and you dog me like I'm a baby, I'm I'm this, I'm that. Why? why, why you're acting why, like how's that you're act, work? Because you're acting like a child. You're a 55 year old grown man and you're acting like a child right now. What are you talking you about? Because because I put Triple H over because you said <laughs> no, I'm always acting, negative. You, you said are I'm acting always... like a 15. You are acting like a 12 year old kid acts. Yeah. When he's being chastised by his mom for something that he thinks he didn't do, or his sister did it too, and he's like, yeah, "Well, my, you know," so that's 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 what you're doing. Right. You're like you're just trying to deflect right. the fact that you're, you know, you are just yeah. you know, an immature jackass. <laughs> just Jeff, Jeff, we, Jeff, we got Jeff, we got to get rid of him so we can talk well, about gloat, gloat about. Yeah. Yeah. To, to be fair though, I don't think he's ever classified himself as a grown man. Yeah, so. which is fair. I got Fred Flintstone <laughs> on my desk, bro, and you want to you want you want to talk about me? Yeah, yeah, yeah dolls, right. dolls, yeah, and toys, exactly. and stuff. You're, 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 unbelievable. Yeah. What a toy All right. Is. 
Well, let me ask you a question. I just got a quick question for you. Yeah. Do you smoke pot every week on Raw right now? When you Bro, I've Raw? I've smoked pot three days in a row. Wait, these past three days? Yeah. Uh huh. Are you a pothead? A little bit. I'm getting there. Do you smoke pot three days in a row? How how often do you smoke it? Like each once day, a day. Just once or once a day. When do you when do you smoke it? Well, I had to smoke it last night because uh, I was really really stressed out. So it was last night, and then she does, and then does, does it help? Melted upstairs, and she I got yelled at. You wait a minute. I'm a child, you smoke, bro. bro, bro I'm a smoking, child. I got bro. caught smoking pot, pot in my own house, and I got yelled at. Bro, you smoke pot you know what? in I the told house. Her, I told her no. Porch. I said, I said, Amy, Who that's Gumby. Pot in the house. I said, Amy, that's Gumby smoking the pot, bro. All right. What do you mean who's smoking dope every day? That's unbelievable. Bro, what do you mean who smokes bro, why don't you pot in the house? This? Bro, I'm a grown man. You... I'm supposed to go outside and smoke pot. It's my what house. What Conan does? What did you do? Conan doesn't just smoke pot at all your podcasts. You do. I wonder how I wonder how Chris Jericho smokes pot. But can I make my closing statement? Go ahead, bro. Well, I'm just gonna edit okay. it out. I'm just gonna edit it out. So go ahead. All right. Well, first of all, you try to make it, you because Conan put Raw over. Okay. Uh, you tried to make the comment that he's putting Raw over because he's on the Jericho Network now, and you married me to that philosophy. Right. Yep. That since I'm doing the show, that that I am putting Raw over. Just because I'm not burying Finn Balor's character yet, okay? Because I also am, yep. you know, on the Jericho Network. Yep. But what you failed to do is any research and actually listen to those shows to see what I actually talk about when I do talk about Raw, okay? So you have you've you've not done any homework. You have made blanket statements, unfounded, and also they are untrue. So you should on a show that you claim. We were basing on being honest. Before I leave, I want you to apologize for labeling me and slandering me and calling me a liar. Well, okay. how am I, how am I going to apologize when you said you promote our show as much as you promote Jericho's show, but Jeff brought up the statistics and it was 20 Jericho once <laughs> Russo. You're going to apologize because for that? Yeah, because they're making up different ads every day and posting things. You guys aren't posting anything. You're you're you're, you're retweeting the same thing over and over. You got two people. You got two people, re and you retweet the same thing. You got five shows. I retweet. They're retweeting for one. They're posting stuff for one show throughout the week. Your show, our show, comes up once a week. Okay, so twenty to three. Let me let's do the math here. Twenty to three is actually less than seven to one. Okay, you do seven days a week. Conan has won, so the ratio of tweets based on the amount of days that you do these shows is pretty accurate. Okay, put up some different ads that I can retweet. I retweet the stuff that you you, you post it, bro. You literally tweet the same thing over and over. Okay, and it shows up in my thing. I, I don't know what you want me to do. I retweet it. People bro, see it. Bro, you, post, re post different you stuff. retweet the same thing over and over because it's going up at different times. There are different people online. Do you not understand that? Put up a different ad to the see, same. This, but is, what this you, is why this you is don't have your anymore. own show. This is no, what this, you don't understand. People how, are online at England a different time than they're online in Maine. That's what you don't understand. So to you, it may be the same tweet. They're going out to different this is, people. This is where a person that had prides himself on numbers does not understand that if you tweet the same thing over and over to different audiences, the people that have still seen it from like eight, from the the people that are awake from eight o'clock to four o'clock, okay, tweet it. So so they go to sleep, or or they they're not like the people that see it again from like four o'clock to twelve o'clock. But the new people to see it, the new people to see it for the first time are going to retweet it because you posted it again. Now think about this. What if you posted one ad for 8 to 4, a different ad for 4 to 12, a different ad? What you would have is is the new people in each time okay. zone tweeting it out, and the people that haven't All seen right. that ad okay. that just retweet it will tweet the new ad. Which right, you, is know what what I do you know what mouth? You know what mouth? Jeff, starting for? today, starting today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post different ads. And we're going to keep the Jericho... They're not ads, just different tweets. Different tweets. We're going to keep the Jericho-Russo count from now 
till next show, and we'll see where we're at. And I will make sure every sh- every tweet is different. All right, mouth. Trust me, bro. If everybody bur- if people put me over and bury you in tweets, I'll retweet that all day long. So you can tell your your listeners can help promote the show on my Twitter account. If you if you bury Vince and put me over, you you I'll, I'll retweet you. So that's that's to all the brand members, and then we'll do some analytics. Then we'll do some analytics on the amount of tweets and stuff and everything of yeah, the people right, that bury Vince Russo compared to the people that put me over. And then, then Jeff, then Jeff, you can do the numbers then, yeah. and then we can see how many people like to bury Vince and put me over. Listen, and, and don't you might have bro, you to don't. listen. You might have to go. Chris may be trying to call, and me and me and uh, Jeff now have to get this. rid of you so we could talk about beating you. Okay. <laughs> That's, this, is this is the part of the show now. This is the part of the show now where we make you go, oh. so me and Jeff could talk about beating you. Okay? No, this is the part of the show where you say thank you for being on. I appreciate uh, the work you do for our show. Thanks for I do appreciate Jeff, you want to Jeff, you want to say it? I do appreciate. Because Jeff was the numbers. Absolutely. I do. I appreciate. You Absolutely appreciate. You. appreciate I still think you're a jackass though, but I do appreciate Goodbye. the work that you do. I can't, I can't wait to see what happens. I can't wait to see what happens when I hang up here because I will be watching. This. Give your Goodbye. plugs. Give the give the Jericho show oh. plug. Go ahead, bro. Oh, we didn't even plug anything, bro. No, he said no. He said no. <laughs> bro, I can't wait till Bela comes out on Monday as Fonz, and we prove that stupid imbecile, big nose, pomp, a pompadour wearing Elvis wannabe that we're right and he's wrong.